beaming intelligence and love and beauty. And we, if we're receptive, we can catch it. And so this week I have the opportunity to interview artists, healers, and activists, and to embrace their sacred yes. How, how did they walk the path to their sacred yes? Because that is the theme of our summit that's happening tomorrow at four specific time with powerful guests that I'll let you know who they are, but you know who some of them are already. You know that, that, that our one one in the port would be with us. And, and here's Russell Brand right now. How you doing, Russell? I'm really happy to see you, Michael. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was, just, I was just telling the folks you were about to come on and letting them know that um, tomorrow is the birthday and all week what we're doing is celebrating how to say yes to ourselves. And we have a summit that's going on tomorrow at 4 p.m. It's absolutely free to everyone. And I know you're on the road, so I just appreciate you stopping by and taking time to be with me today. I'm very grateful for any opportunity that I get to be in your company. I, I know what you do. I, as you know, I've attended Agave. So I've seen you when you're channeling. And uh, I love God. And I like to, I like the opportunity to be in the concentrated versions of the almighty light. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, the last time we saw each other was at Agape. And then I think you went to Australia, then COVID hit and the traveling stopped for a while. But uh, it was good to see you there. And, uh, I, you know, obviously I was telling everyone this week, we're dealing with saying, saying yes to ourselves. That's the theme of it. And on your website, you, you say that you're a comedian and that you like change and that you're an activist and you, you're, you're here for awakening. And I know that a lot of people know you as the individual who's been in these movies, you're a comedian, but I, I really dig, you know, your, your podcast, Under the Skin, and you really are becoming a powerful instrument for, for change, a powerful instrument for awakening. You know, when, when did that emerge through you? When, when did that became, become part of your, your really priority, your dynamic? Well, thank you for saying firstly, Michael. And what happened for me is because I was a drug addict, you know, dependent on crack and heroin, I was shown the 12 step method of recovery and the 12 step method of recovery is a process of spiritual awakening and then sustained connection with God through the practices of a certain method and, uh, and by a, a membership of a community of other drug addicts and alcoholics. For me, and the program in its original form is, is, suggests, states even, that the problem is not the chemical that you're dependent on or even the behavior that you're dependent on, but an egocentric worldview infatuated with the ego, infatuated with the self and the edicts of the self. The more I learned about this, the more I understood that this described me, that it didn't even matter if I stopped taking drugs, that I would find another way of expressing this constant wanting, this tendency to identify with external stimuli instead of the internal state. Through letting go of drugs and alcohol, through learning more about this program through the people that have walked the path ahead of me and because the program encourages uh, prayer meditation and a, a close conscious contact with a higher power of your own understanding that I call God it meant I became curious and investigative of other spiritual ideas and got the opportunity to meet teachers like you great people like Brené Brown or Tony Robbins or Muji, Wim Hof, Eckhart Tolle and like Radhanath Swami. Like, so I've been like hanging with masters and, but, and, but, but only as a result of nothing else works. I've been dependent on so many things, on so many things, you know? Absolutely. So, so, so yeah. somewhere along the line, you had to give yourself permission to break out of that old paradigm and to say yes to the real Russell. And that's what we're seeing on your podcast. Tell, tell, tell everybody the, the name of your two. I know you have two. You have, um, you have Under the Skin and, and Above the Noise. They're available on Apple Podcasts and Luminary. And that's these correct. Are weekly, right? Yeah. Under the Skin, you've been a guest on. Every, in every episode, I talk to a, uh, a, a teacher or an academic or, or per, you know, from whom I try my best over the course of that hour or hour and a half to 
glean deep wisdom. I happened to speak to you, Michael, on the same day that I spoke to that other great spiritual Michael, Michael Singer, the writer of the book Untethered Soul. And both of you yeah. told me the same thing. And both of you told me the same thing, not in response to a question, like just out of nowhere. Both of you said something like, you do not need to make a plan. Make yourself right and everything will unfold for you. Make yourself right. Like you said it. And then a, like a few hours later, I was talking to Michael Singer. And he said it, and I've never forgotten that because uh, I thought that's interesting information. I always think I have to control everything. Like I have to organize it. But in this saying yes to yourself, this idea that you're discussing, perhaps you tell me, Michael, is it an invitation to like a kind of higher aspect of the self to guide your life? Is it a, an invitation to connect with an aspect of yourself that may otherwise be dormant? Absolutely. I mean, there's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's an unfolding process of who you are. It's like we are perfect ideas held in the mind of God. And these ideas are unfolding, but we're at a stage of our evolution where we have to say yes to it. It doesn't just happen. It happens just according to grace as we give our permission. And then what happens is inspired wisdom, transforming knowledge starts to flow through us in a language and in a way that we can understand and sometimes it thwarts our plans. Sometimes our plans are too small. Sometimes our plans are emanating from the ego, you know, or, or, or trying to fit into the status quo or to follow the crowd. And then we begin to get a little inspired wisdom through our intuition and direct knowing. We realize, wow, we were going down the wrong path. It wasn't really for us. That was for somebody else. And so in saying yes to ourselves, it doesn't mean you just throw plans away, but they're more written in pencil. So that, so that when the inspiration comes, you adjust. It's like, you know, just like, like flying on a plane, the pilot is always adjusting, you know, based on uh, climate change and wind and weather. It's a, no one goes straight from LA to Chicago or to New York. It's, it's a constant adjustment based on what's happening. And I think when we throw ourselves open and say yes uh, to ourselves, and I'm gonna ask you some more questions along those lines, we now become available to wis inspired wisdom that doesn't come from the figuring out part of our mind or the controlling or the manipulating part of our mind to make something happen. As you were saying, trying to get something from out there in the world, something unfolds from within us. It's, it's, it's a, you know, like within the avocado seed, there's an avocado tree, it unfolds. Within the acorn, there's an oak tree, it, un it unfolds. So I think, I know, I know for a fact that there's something about us that's real, eternal, forever, essential, one of a kind, unique. And when our divine yes factor is high enough, come what may, you know, uh, then there's an unfolding process that takes over. And it's been beautiful watching you over the years because you've had to say yes. And I imagine you've had some some trepidation, some fear, some things you, you, you had to overcome to, in order to, to go to the, the stage of, of iteration of, of Russell that you are now, you know. Um, and so if, if you were to look back at yourself, if you, were to, let me, if you were to look back and look at the younger Russell, what would you say to him now? I mean, if you could go back and say, Russell, hey, Well, I wish I'd always known that it is all within me. I wish I'd always known that. I wish that I was born into a culture that recognizes the sacred and trains people for sacredness. But maybe I was and maybe I am. Maybe I can't see the depth of the plan. But I, I wish that I'd been able to live a life where I hadn't been, uh, like I hadn't been unconscious about my behavior and unconscious about the world. And I suppose that's what I would say to a younger version of myself. But I feel like I'm dying all the time. I feel like I'm dying all the time. And this thing you said about, you know, serendipity and being willing to follow synchronicity and being available to that path that, you know, I'm, I'm on the road at the moment, but I'm on uh, what we would call holiday and what you would call vacation. And we're like, we're camping in a country called Wales, one of the countries of, you know, of uh, the British Isles. And, you know, like, <clears throat> We're driving around in this van, Michael. You know, we're just in a camper van, man. And it's sort of, a, you know, with my wow. daughters and, and my wife. And, you know, it's crazy. We're just like, look, look at this beautiful mountain here. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful. 
Mother it's Nature. Crazy. Yeah, there's my boy. And look at the sun. The sun is setting here. And we've just been saying, sort of, we've been saying yes to things sort of continually on this trip. We've just been allowing it to unfold, you know, like the, it gets hot in that van and intense with two children and a dog and me and my ego and my will. And I keep praying and surrendering. And we stopped and pulled over when it was getting intense. We knew we weren't going to get to a campsite that we planned to get to. We pulled over and just asked someone for help, just someone on the side of the road. And this person let us get in the river and he directed us to a restaurant and the people at the restaurant directed us to another campsite and the person at this campsite michael was so beautiful and i thought i've got to do i've got to come here and do a retreat here what i mean to say wow. is um you know that famous i think it's thomas aquinas said the kingdom of heaven is spread upon the earth and man sees it not that beneath beneath ourselves permission to it a tree a tree doesn't have a no you plant the tree in the proper condition bam it grows you know a flower just grows but we have such infinite potential to reflect the entire cosmos we have to say yes which is why we go through contrast i mean when you talked about your younger days and the ego running amok and the different cir circumstances and situations that were created because the ego running amok gave you contrast so that when you came into the light, you started getting little glimpses of it. You had enough contrast to see, so, oh, this, this is the real deal here. This wasn't the real deal. That was, yeah. that was a, a pleasure run amok. That was a pseudo pleasure. And, mm. and then you started to taste joy and bliss without any external uh, situations being the way you wanted them to be. But I think con the, way it's set, the way it's set up is that we get contrast so that once we really see it, we can't unsee it. And that even though there are moments in our life where you might be tempted or seduced or provoked or intimidated back into the egoic shell, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. And you're totally uncomfortable until you get back to yourself, you know? And so you just described on your, your holiday, you had a plan to get to your, your, your site. Didn't work out that way, but you met a friend, you swam in a river, you went to a nice restaurant, you're now looking at a great mountain, you're outside, you know, so the, so this was, it, this may have been better than you just mm. finding your site right away and camping out, mm. you know, but you would have never met that guy or never jumped into that river without a deviation in, in, the, in, the, in the planning, you see. And uh, I, I think that's, I think that's a level of grace, actually, you know. Yes, it's yes. a level of grace. I really, well, that's one of the things I would love to learn more about from you is how to practice this grace as a father, how to practice this grace as a husband, how to grow through my work to become a better practitioner, to continue to be able to surrender my own wants and needs. You know, I, this is this is what I would like to learn from you. When I see you um, doing them sermons at Agape and channeling, I feel like, yeah, that's, you know, you're you, man. I'm not saying that I want to be anybody else, even someone as great as you. But, like, I feel like um, I, 
I almost like I fall so in love with God that I can't bear anything else, you know, like, and I think I felt like that as a drug addict, man. I think I felt like that. I couldn't have anything but God. I think drug addicts, and I know you know this, are just trying to synthesize the experience of oneness, trying to synthesize the experience of connection. And I can still have that mentality. Like I, I want to live sometimes continually suspended in, in grace, continually suspended. And I still have a lot to let go of. And I wonder, I wonder what you suggest. Well, I think, I think that um, when we, you know, we, we have personalities, as you know, sub-personalities. We have roles that we play. And I think that when we enter into spiritual practice, we melt and the roles kind of dissolve. That's the crucifixion. The, the real crucifixion is the, the death of the different roles we're playing. And then the resurrection is that when the luminous being rises up and it doesn't mean we don't have roles anymore but the luminosity and the love infuses those roles so you become a better father become a better husband become a better whatever it is your particular task or gift is but you're no longer in a role about it you're just that's russell being dad that's russell being being husband that's russell being the comedian that's russell being the activist but you know because I, I know myself when i grew out of like being a minister you know, it was like a it was like a box, like a role. This is this is a minister. This is what a minister is supposed to do, you know. But as Michael evolved, with 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 his love of God and this total surrender to the presence of God, didn't mean that I'm not a minister anymore. But there's no box around it as to how that should look, other than my moment by moment connection with the presence. So I can I can wear what I want to wear. I can I can put the shoes on that I want to put on. I can say the way I want to say it. I don't have to fit into somebody <laughs> else's perspective of how I should be because I'm not that role. I'm actually Michael, you know, as God, as God made me. And, and of course, that journey is forever. It's like we never, we're never done, you know. There's a completed idea within us that continues to unfold. And this is what I've loved about you. You know, you just keep, you keep unfolding, you know. And I love you know, that you say you're interested in awakening. I was looking at a little bit of your uh, Instagram today and you were speaking of the fact that you actually believe in awakening, that, 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 that we can actually, as a humanity, actually awaken because of what you've gone through. Now I, now, I think, the reason why I think that's so important, because a lot of times people will read books or they read channeled books and things like that, but when a, a man such as yourself has actually gone through stuff <laughs> and, and has come out the other side, so to speak, I think your words have more power than a lot of the channeled material that people get because those are disembodied spirits channeling information, which is inspirational. But when an individual has actually gone through hell and touched heaven, way more power, way more power. So I, you actually believe in awakening because of what's happened to you. Speak on that for a second. I like it when you said like that you, in the end, you dissolve the roles and it just becomes like, it reminded me of something I read by a great English writer called Robert McFarlane. He said that um, in some um, native language in the country you're in there, uh, that they, where they, they don't, they describe a river as rivering, like he's ah. being a river a river in the moment, you know, and yeah. like, it's not, it's not a noun, it's a verb, it's happening, it's happening now in the moment. And I feel this beginning to happen. And I, and like, often I feel like, you know, like I don't want to be a comedian in the way that I was or an actor. I want to, you know, I want to set up places and appear live and talk and set up communities and challenge the existing systems in ways that are appropriate and not destructive or painful for other people because I know there's so much suffering now. I know there's so much suffering. I'm beginning to understand the core. I'm beginning to understand the cause. And I just feel like I'm, um, yeah, I'm continuing to let go of um, the things that tethered me to the old life and I really like what you said there about letting go of those roles because you know look really I the reason I wanted to become a famous person is because I wanted to feel valuable you know even I'm an artist and I love performing and I love doing comedy but 
you know, the, the culture tells you that if you can't turn what you do into money, then it, it ain't, you ain't worth nothing. If you can't become, if you can't, through the fundamentalist faith of individualism, materialism and rationalism, if you can't achieve according to those deep fundamentalist faiths, those, you know, that materialism and consumerism so deep in our culture that we can't even see the edges of it. You know, we don't even right. know we're living in a fundamentalist ideology. You know, I never would have invented the idea of becoming a celebrity or whatever. And now I think like I'm perhaps finally in a position to sort of step off of the rails that are laying out for us the rails that prevent us being free whether them rails are neurological ones or you know however you want to conceive of them like to to yeah, i like that way you put it saying yes to yourself allowing yourself to unfold the same way any other botanical biochemical entity might right right so you have the you had the experience of you know i often say um religious people are trying not to go to hell but spiritual people have already been there you know, so, so you had the, you had the experience actually going through hell to be able to touch heaven. So you know it's real and you can actually see the matrix of gross materialism and consumerism and all the, all the, the way people are living, as you've indicated, they don't even know they're caught in it. And their, their survival instinct is, has run them up. So they just want to get more and more and more and accumulate more and more and more and more and more. And you can never get enough of that which doesn't satisfy, you know, but once you see it, doesn't mean you can't be prosperous or healthy or have a great time but that with that particular egoic structure that can never get enough it's not running the show anymore you, you can look at it and say, oh there it is it's trying to pop up it's trying to take over you know and then through spiritual practice and through prayer and meditation and hanging with as you were talking about hanging with the masters and uh, uh, then you start to slowly become aware of its, its conniving ways, you know, its subtle ways to try to creep back in. And as long as we have a body, we'll have an ego. Mm -hmm. um, but, but after a while, your priority, this is what I wanted to come to, your priority is awakening. Once your priority to say yes to awakening and say yes to whatever your gift and talent is in that awakening process, everything conspires for your awakening the good the bad and the ugly you see the good the beautiful it all it all conspires and so you mean full you surrender now, michael you think full surrender like you know i know with christians they sort of say you know like i fully surrender to jesus christ or in islam you know fully surrendering to the prophet you know like you, you think that even i know you're a trans denominational man you know like uh so like uh it's the you say surrender to this great this great spirit that is beyond time and beyond space allow it to take over allow it moment to moment to take over come what may come what may it's a total and complete surrender and when i say surrender i'm not talking about waving a white flag and giving up i'm talking about surrendering to the next iteration of who we are it's a, it's a caterpillar surrendering to the butterfly mm -hmm. it's you and me surrendering to the next stage of our unfoldment of which the personality and the ego can't see it. It can't see into the unknown. It's uh, the personality thinks it's committing suicide, you know, when it surrenders. But it's actually allowing that which we can't see by our sensorium, the five senses, to emerge. And then it shocked and surprised us that we can be in bliss and ecstasy and joy with nothing. <laughs> you know, we can, some, we can. We can be in bliss and ecstasy. I, you know, I was, I was speaking about a man by the name of Clarence Chance a couple of weeks ago, and he was an individual that was sentenced to life in prison for a murder he didn't do. And his cousin belonged to Agape and asked us to pray for him. And ultimately, the Innocence Project got him out. After, but, he, but he spent like 17 years in jail. But they finally got him out. But he was in his jail cell, and somebody had placed a book by Krishnamurti on his bed. And he began to read this book and he went into the spiritual practice of not allowing the past to come into present moment. And he became free in prison. He became an artist, martial artist, a painter, uh, 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 be able to play musical instruments. So he's sitting in prison, but he was in total freedom. <laughs> so then when he got out, you know, they had to compensate him for the time he spent in jail. So he had a lot of money, found his wife, but he would, the first thing he said when he came to the Agape, to Agape service 
he said, I was driving down the street and I saw these people, they were, they were arguing with each other because they were in a car accident. He said, they were just arguing over money. I mean, excuse me, over metal. As if that was a big deal, it was just bit metals. I'm like, nobody got hurt. Why would they, he couldn't. And then he saw people stepping on flowers to rush into the meditation service. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I saw more free people in prison than I see out here. <laughs> And reminded everybody about where the real freedom is, you see. And, and again, those roles dissolve and uh, we become more ourselves. And, and, I, and, and let's just talk a little bit about your activism because you go hard on a lot of things, you know. And you really try to break people out of the matrix and let people know that what they're getting from the corporate media is, is most of the time is not really real, it's not really truth. It's just, yeah. it's just something to shape our perception. And I really appreciate when you go in on that, you know. Yes, yes. Well, I think that you cannot extract the spiritual life from the political life. I think our social systems are an expression of our spiritual state. And I think that, that in conjunction with government and the financial, uh, you know, sort of finan powerful financial interests, the media is operate is deliberately creating a kind of a state of suspended reality of distraction i don't think of it as individuals like malevolent individuals i don't know enough to say whether or not there are occultist organizations deliberately creating ignorance but i can see that the sum total of the economic relationships that are in place provoke promote and sustain the aspects of our nature that we would be better off transcending. As a person with a body, I need to survive. As a human being, it's possible that I'm gonna procreate, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna have an instinct towards status. But when these um, instincts are promoted to us, to a kind of this pinnacle state, this sort of delusional state, then um, we're not able to live in reality. Like your man there survived, um, described running over flowers to get to meditation or, you know, not being, not being able to be free, not being able to be free. And um, yeah, for me, like when I talk about, I don't know, media, media corruption, government corruption, financial corruption, I suppose it's just because I've had a degree of access because of the kind of life I've lived to, to people that are in sort of powerful positions. I've met really powerful, wealthy people that are not at all happy, not at all happy because it doesn't, it can't ever work. And I've met people that are inside these institutions. And I, that's one area. When I'm in that area, Michael, I really have a sense that I understand. That I, I understand the, um, the deception. I understand it. You know, I've awoken to that. The sun's just disappearing behind the horizon. It's so beautiful, mate. There's just a sort of a semicircle of glowing red sun left above uh. the sea. It's so it's so perfect and so 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 beautiful here in this sort of campsite just surrounded by people that I don't know my dog's getting involved with those people over there hello there sorry about him hello hiya yeah so, um... <laughs> thank you for thank you for giving us a peek of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is what's but going you, on you russell you know what i, I don't want to i don't want to uh oh, look at that it's beautiful i don't want to take you away from your family and your holiday any longer I just, just want you to... are my family. You are my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your time. And, you know, we'll do this again. We'll spend some more time and go dive in deeper into some of these other subjects. And uh, I'm extremely grateful that you said yes to you. Thank and you. That, Thank you. Uh, and because of that, you're touching so many people and waking so many people up and breaking them out of status seeking and uh, walking with the status quo and having them think again, like when, when they see something on television, is that really true is, is, or not? You know, instead of just sitting there and, and um, taking it all in as if it's real, you know? And uh, so you. I appreciate you. Any, any, anything that you want people to know that you're about to be promoting, anything you're doing that you want people to know about? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Um, 
like I, my podcast you've mentioned, they're available on Luminary. That's a subscription model podcast. If you don't want to pay for my stuff on YouTube, I have two channels. I do meditation on there. Bear, come here, mate. Come here. The dog's attacking some people playing badminton. He's not attacking the people. He's attacking the bad, the shuttlecock is the word oh. for the for the missile he used in badminton. Lay down. Lay down, you. Lay down. So, yeah, have a look at my um, YouTube channel. And also, the reason I'm on um, the, this this Instagram account, this is my wife's Instagram account, because I'm um, thankfully illiterate with social media. So with my own phone, I wouldn't be able to get on Instagram. And my <laughs> wife, um, she writes beautiful books about craft and mental health and craft and children. And so people should um, follow her and look at her stuff. Laura Brand, the Joy Journal. Okay, beautiful. Well, definitely everybody's heard it now. And uh, I appreciate your presence. And... Uh, Go be with your other family. We are Thank family. You. Keep me in your family. prayers. Keep me in your prayers, Michael. Yeah, hey, I, we, I, I we just accept that. right now, Russell. Russell, we're accepting right now that right where you are, the presence and the power and the love of God is flowing through you in such a powerful way that you keep growing and developing and unfolding to your greater yet to be. We embrace this moment on the holiday with you and your family that it is safe, it is wonderful, it's magnificent, it's restorative for you and the family to be better versions of yourself. I give thanks for this and allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God Have a bright you. day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye, Michael. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone, that was Russell Brand, the great uh, comedian, the great actor, uh, activist, and all about having people awaken now. And so I hope you got a lot out of that. Remember, tomorrow on the 21st, which is my actual born day, we're having a free summit beginning at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, Danielle Laporte will be with us. Queen of Fua will be with us. And um, uh, 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 Neil Donald Walsh will be with us, along with um, Don Miguel Ruiz will be with us as well. And so uh, absolutely tune in. Just go to agapelive.com. And, um, and participate. There'll also be some bonus. I mean, uh, you're going to see a part of an interview with myself and Sterling Brown. And um, so agapelive.com, tune in. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock, I will have a, another Instagram Live. I think it'll just be me speaking for a few moments on whatever is in the flow at that moment. And then we'll meet at 4 p.m. Have a bright day. God bless you all.